so real quick before you did that did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kooka. Um, and everybody else, it pushes them in the direction they want to go, and I hold their hand and we go that way, or we don't do business, that's fine. Um, wasn't meant to be. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's what I do. That That's awesome, though. So 100%, you know, completely agree with that. And, um, you know, the good thing is you're showing them. And I kind of do that a little bit, and I let them know, hey, if you go with a realtor, it it's on average about – nine to 11 percent to sell your house okay mm -hmm. on on average and i say that because it depends if they're going to come back with concessions they're going to come back with what you know things that you may 100 you know, want you yeah, to do with the house. A fee and your closing costs like there might yeah. still be two three percent concessions exactly or four or five percent i've seen up i've seen six percent so i mean yeah, I would say definitely about ten percent. That's what I did. That one twenty-five, I used yeah. ninety percent of that. Like I think I came about one hundred twelve. Yeah. Um, but instead of doing that and explaining that to them, I'll just send them the sheets and they'll look at you know actual right. closing costs. And I just I like to paint a picture for people and then yeah. let them interpret what good is good and what's bad is bad and what's worth what to them. Um, instead of telling them, see, now we're only ten grand apart. Well, now I'm trying to sell you. Yep. Instead, I'm just trying to inform you. That's interesting. So. so, yeah, and I'm actually dealing with one seller who's a high, it's a high end um, property, and you know they want X number here, but because it's a higher end property, the holding costs and everything alone are just astronomical. So it's like I gave them a one down here, and like I can come up a little bit. They gave me the rock bottom number, which is up here, you know, and I'm like, it's just not going to work, you know. Um, I mean, that's I, what I tell people too. Yeah. Is I tell them, I listen. You think I'm, you think I'm rich? You think I'm buying these hundred fifty thousand dollars properties with my money? Damn fool, you know. Yeah. I use private money, you know, just like everybody else. And even if I didn't, here's the thing, you know, if I'm not borrow, borrowing money and paying interest on it. Let's say I am using my own cash. It's good as nothing. It's sitting there not in a savings account, at least making something percent. If I buy this property with my own cash, it's making zero. Yep. Um, so I still have to account for the fact of, you know, and you don't have to get into the technicality of it like that. I mean, yeah. however you want to tell them, but like technically you buy your own cash, like, you know, economic loss, like you're incurring economic loss, like you're not making any money. You're 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 losing money on the def, you know deflation of the, the dollar is every you know month you hold on to it, but it's I mean it's you know it's it's a cost. Um, right. Whether it's money or someone else's money, it costs me to use that money, and uh, you know unfortunately that bakes into the cake here of the equation I'm putting together. And, uh, so I have a question that if you come across have, have you come across a deal that maybe either got locked up too high or you're not getting any interest on it and you can't really renegotiate or you want to renegotiate, but really you got no feedback from any buyers. Right. You don't have any really power to renegotiate. You know I mean? uh, exactly. So um, basically you're forced to let the property go, you know? So how do you have that conversation with the seller? You know, um, Fortunately, I have only had probably in the last three years. First year, I had some properties fall to contract. No, I got to them. Last year and this year, I think together, honestly, I think I've only had about. I've had less than five deals fall to contract. That's awesome. Um, one was we didn't see the property yet. We went there. It was not what they told us. Couldn't renegotiate. That's on the seller. Yep. Um, the other one. Pipe burst when the property was vacant. We and we were told them not to. Uh, dude, honestly, I mean, 
I'm trying to think. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, yeah, the, uh, uh, December I had a property where um, I locked it up too high and I couldn't move it. Um, but I actually, I put an inspection period on it mm. because I was unsure. So the thing is right now is because I'm in Genesee County, like I'm like now, I mean, if I lock up a property, like I'm going to make a commitment, honestly, just to force myself to get better. But I have a commitment to myself that I'm going to yep. close on the property. Um just because either I can flip it or I can get it at a good enough price or whatever it is. Um, but for those ones that I don't, I put an inspection period on them. And the only reason I'm, I say that is because if I'm not sure about an area, like my first deal that I did down in Oakland County, it was, uh, or not Oakland County. I think it was Wayne. Uh, where's Inkster? Uh, Wayne County. Wayne County. I didn't know it. Um, so I told the seller, I walked a little more caution. Hey, cool. Yada, yada. Um, I, I would like a, a small inspection inspection period on this property. I'm not going to bring, you know, I'm not doing the whole nine yards, but, um, you know, I am new to this area. And so I would like uh, a secondhand opinion for my contractor. Um, I did that. They were fine with it. And again, I think it gauges their level of motivation. Um, Cause if they're like, man, you need to do all that. You know, if you don't know what you're looking at, you know, then don't, you know, you don't need to buy my property. Well then obviously they're not that motivated. They're looking for right. someone who wants to buy the property and you know, they don't need someone to sell buy the property. Um, so I don't know. I mean, sorry for not having a quick answer, but I mean, oh, that's I fine. Don't lock, you know, if I lock up a property and falls out of contract because I don't know the area, but because I don't know the area, I'm putting an inspection period on it. So um, it's not of as hard feelings with somebody and it doesn't tee them up to think that it's a done deal. Once we sign the piece of paper, like, Hey, just so you know, here, I'm getting an inspection period, which means I would love to move forward. I'm planning on moving forward, but if I don't move forward, I told you that there's a possibility I'm not moving forward. <laughs> um, you know, I, I wish that I could just do that on every property and close without an inspection period and stuff like that. But like, I mean, their inspection periods are super normal, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, nine out of 10 properties or whatever. How long is your market? Go through inspection period, even cash deals sometimes. Yeah. How long is your inspection period? Um, I negotiate with that with the seller. Um, Usually I, my, in my contract, it it specifies unless otherwise said inspection period is 10 days. Um, That's just what mine says. If somebody moans or groans about it, then we figure something else out. But mine's just standard 10. And then that brings me to another question is, is, do you put down EMD? I do. But again, inspection period, I get it right back. Okay. But and, if I'm in Genesee yeah. County, nine times out of 10, I don't need an inspection period and I will put a thousand dollars down. Okay. 500 bucks usually. Yeah. It's usually about 500 bucks. Okay. Sometimes and then, and then, if it's a hot deal and that seller like is getting multiple calls and stuff. Like I'll solidify uh, my offer with letting them know, like I'll put a two, you know, put two, three thousand dollars non-refundable back. Meaning if I goof up, you're keeping my cash and find another investor. So I will do that, but that's because I'm in Genesee County and I know what I'm looking at. Gotcha. So I guess I teeter totter, right? Like I either use my my advantage because I'm in my own backyard and I full throttle it and tell them I'm gonna do ABC, or if I don't know where I'm at, unfortunately I walk a little more caution, but it doesn't hurt anybody's feelings because I already told them what I'm gonna do. Um, you know, I don't have my advantage point here versus the guy in Oakland County or Wayne County who can just go for it and good for him. I mean, he's getting more deals over there than I am, but that's why I play in my own backyard. <laughs> yeah. So with that, like for my contracts, I, I don't have an EMD that I put in there. So, sure. um, you know, so the inspection period is kind of like the length of the contract. So, um, everybody but, does it differently. But every, yeah, everyone does it a little bit differently. Much at all, really. They don't care, but yeah, you know, um, yeah. Every now it's different when I'm talking to an agent, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, you so, got to walk away. Yeah. You got to walk how they walk. Otherwise, you know, there's, they're controlling the deal. Awesome. So, um, you know, is there any any last tips that you would give for new wholesalers out there um, just trying to get started? Uh, Stay you know, in your own back, work in your own back. I mean, unless you live in, you know, the middle of nowhere, but I mean, work out of your own backyard. Nobody knows it better than you do. Uh, yeah. If you're not, if you don't, you know, actually want to close on properties, I, I would at least put yourself and train your brain to be in the mindset of an investor. Um, you know, go out, talk to investors, learn the costs of private money. So get, you know, I mean, eventually I'd imagine most of us want to eventually flip properties or buy rentals ourselves. So why not yes. start that practice now and start learning hard money lenders, working with them or at least running deals by them. Um, 
you know, if they fit their criteria to lend on, then you're getting better at looking at and knowing what a deal is. Um, and then from there, just learn to have your, your, I call it our perfect seller appointment, but that's yeah. just, you know, setting the expectations up front, yep. telling them how long you're going to be on the call or whatever the conversation is going to be, whether that's in person, um, the agenda slash results of the conversation and the opportunity to say no. Hey, if this isn't for you right now, 97% of people I talk to, it's not. So right. it wouldn't shock me if it wouldn't be. Um, right. You know, and that's completely fine. Um, you know, so yeah, I, stay in your own backyard and, and, and you know, uh, you know start, start reaching out to your lenders and your buyers or people who are buying and start to become friends with them. You know, I mean, it's yes. give and take, you know, if those people are giving you information and helping you out legitimately you know make sure you bring your deals to them too in return and that's one thing is it one thing if you are doing your own backyard i'm going to tell you the best list okay to go for all right on this is the 100 percent guaranteed best list to go for it's called a driving for dollars list yeah for sure you go out there you know it's distressed because you you view it you 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 know that there's something going on whatever it is and you add that to a driving for dollars list and sometimes so, those those deal or those houses aren't on any lists for some right reason. exactly so th- they probably don't everything's paid like say it's at a vacant property and but the owners he they're keeping up with the payments they're keeping up the taxes they're keeping up with everything you know yep. they have a lawn service that comes in and maybe once a month just enough to keep the city off of their bay you know, um, whatever the case may be. And you go in there and you see some, whatever things may go through that it looks distressed and you add it to your list. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Now you're the only person contacting them. For sure. So, but yeah. um, I really, really want to thank you for coming on here with me. Thanks for having me again. Uh, you know, I really appreciate it. The one thing I like about bringing somebody out, bringing somebody on that we've already talked with, is we don't have to go through the origin story, how you started. Yeah, it was good. We had a lot to talk about. So it was really cool. I, I really yeah. do appreciate it. So cool. yeah. um, everybody wants to get a hold of me. My number's there. Feel free. Give me a call. Awesome. And so. then, do you need help with any with anything else be from our audience or anything like that at the moment? No, I mean, uh, you know, uh, if you want to get a hold of me as far as getting my buyers list, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm Genesee County, a little mm-hmm. bit of Oakland. Um, not to be rude, but I also don't want to waste your time. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not in Oakland, I'm not in Wayne County, I'm not in, you know, the Thumb, I'm not in Lansing, I'm not in Saginaw. Um, you know, there's people out there, but uh, you know, if, if you're in your, if you're in the same neighborhoods I'm in, um, I'd love to work with you. So that's awesome. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down, Carson. Just hold on and we'll talk in a minute. So, all right. Cool. But, uh, awesome. That is really good. I'm happy to, happy to have Carson here. And for anybody else, you want to get on my buyer's list, you can go ahead and text me. Um, if you want to JV with me, go ahead and text me as well. And uh, we'll, we'll be able to get together. The good thing is, is um, on the next podcast, we're going to have uh, Ronald Walker with us um, again, and we will be talking more in depth on uh, a lot of different things. I believe it's, I think one of them is how to make 12 grand in four weeks. So uh, that's something that he wants to talk about. So I'm happy to have him and uh, stay tuned. The next one will be in four, in two weeks. Uh, next, not next Monday, but the Monday after. So uh, we will be marketing. So keep a lookout for it. And until next time, let's all do deals together. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room.